What's up guys? It's Covert Code here and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to script in 15 minutes. Now before we get started I just want to let you guys know that I'm gonna be going fast so if you're confused and need more details about any of these um, check out my Zero to Hero series. It goes into depth about every single topic uh, that you need to know uh, to script uh, and it doesn't go as fast so let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is view explorer properties toolbox output um even asset manager if you want and go to model and insert object okay so to insert a script you would obviously or naturally put them in server script service okay um and i go into detail about why you would do that um the properties window essentially allows you to modify details about objects so if you click on uh, the base plate here you can modify the colors and all that but we're focusing on scripting every single script that you create will come up with this um print hello world and if you go to the output and click play up here or run actually um it'll say hello world and that's what printing does printing essentially outputs text into the uh output section and that's how you create your first script so variables variables are these things um containers which you store information in. so for example if i wanted to say that um x is 15 that's how i would store 15 inside of x if i wanted to say that uh, my name is uh covert code that's how i would store my name those are variables and you would do uh whatever you want with these variables actually they are very useful uh when it comes to programming and usually you would store objects so if i wanted to store the base plate you would go to uh maybe you would say uh base plate is equal to workspace dot base plate okay so that's workspace dot base plate using the dot means you're going inside of workspace and retrieving something which in this case is the base plate now let's get on to if statement so if something then do something so if something is true okay then you would do something if something is not true you would use else so let me give you guys an example so if base plate dot name is equal to base plate then do something else if that is not true do something else okay so basically you've got base plate dot name here okay and if you go to properties you can actually search around and find name that's a property we are going inside of base plate and searching for the name property and if that name is equal to okay notice that we're using two equal signs if that is equal to base plate so if the name is equal to base plate then we're gonna do something okay else if that is not true which means if this condition does not hold if the name is not equal to base plate then we're gonna do something else so i'm going to just print out uh not base plate okay uh but if it is i'm going to print out is base plate and if we run this it's going to print out base plate uh is base plate that is as you guys can see okay so if i change the name to uh something else okay um and run it'll actually say uh base plate is not a valid member of workspace that is because it is no longer called base plate. so we need to search up for workspace or something else okay if we run this um it'll say something else okay which is not base plate so that's how if statements work and let me introduce you guys to loops now so if it is not called base plate we want to print out um numbers one to 100 so for i is equal to one to 100 do so essentially i want to count from one to 100 and store these variables inside of i remember this is a variable just like this one okay and if I just print out print i just like this and run, it's going to print out from 1 to 100, okay? Um, and if you really don't want to use loops, you can just say print 1, uh, you know, and print 2. But that would take ages, okay? And that's why you use loops um, to essentially automate annoying things. However, um, if it is now called base plate, okay, I want to uh, loop from um let's say maybe from 500 to 10,000 okay and i'm going to print x um and this will not run unless the name is base plate so we just need to change this back to base plate and change this as well just like that um and run and it's going to print out just give it a second here because that is a lot of numbers okay um the numbers from five 
100 to 10,000. Now you can't see them all because there's so many numbers, um, but it, it does it, trust me. Um, I can even do from like to, to 1,000. And as you guys can see, 500 to 1,000, no problem. All of them show up, okay? So that's how loops work. There is another type of loop, uh, which is the pairs loop. So for I, V in pairs, workspace, get children, do, okay? Now this is a function. And what a function is, is essentially um, uh, a, a, a set of code which is grouped and you put that set of code underneath a name, okay? So instead of um, putting all of this and repeating it like that, okay? That's not efficient. I would store this in a function. So let me just undo that. Uh, so function test, okay? And I would put that code inside of this. Um, and now whenever I run test, just like this, okay? Whenever I run test, this function will run. And you can copy and paste this as many times as you want now. See how there's much less uh, redundancy? You're just calling test. You're not copying and pasting the code. That's why functions are used. Now, um, this function here is being ran differently, okay? It's, it's a um, different type of function. It's a built-in function made by Roblox. So you're not writing this one yourself, okay? But get children exists and essentially it gets all the children within workspace. So children are objects uh, within another item, okay? So everything inside of workspace is a child of workspace. Um, and how I knew this was just, uh, you know, just go to the wiki. I have a tutorial on how to actually read and understand the wiki. Just go there and you'll find as many functions as you want. Anyway, so we're going to be looping through workspace and getting all the children. So for I, I is the counter, okay? So I is the index. I is index. V is object, okay? So let me show you guys. Print I, okay? And V.name, just like that. So this is just going to say uh, one, two, three, four, five, depending on the count, okay? And this is called a continuation, okay? So we want the print to also include a uh, colon, okay? And then we also want to include the name. So if I run this really quick, um, you can see that it says one is camera, two is terrain, Actually, two is base base and three is terrain, okay? And those are all the children in workspace. And why this is called pairs? Well, um, you're looping in pairs, so you're using two variables instead of one this time. That's why that's called pairs. And uh, to introduce you guys to something, what if we wanted to destroy everything, okay? Um, inside of, I don't know, let's, let's create a model. So the way you do that is insert object model, okay? Call this uh, test. Okay, and I'm going to copy base plate by right click copying, paste inside of test, paste inside of test, paste inside of test. I'm going to be coloring these randomly um, so you guys can see the difference. Okay, and just like that, we have three base plates. And I'm just going to remove this um, thing here. Okay, and for IV in pairs, workspace dot uh, test get children. Okay, so we're just getting all the children within this model. And I am just going to wait one second, okay? So if you don't want the script to run instantly, you would use wait, so this is in seconds. So I'm going to wait one second, and I'm going to destroy V. V is the object, remember that. So if we run, it's going to wait one second, destroy, wait one second, destroy, wait one second, destroy. So destroy is the function you would use to destroy things in the game. What if I wanted to duplicate things instead of, uh, you know, destroying them? Fine, you can do that as well. Um, so the way you would do this is uh, local clone and the local keyword is used with variables and functions. And I'm not going to go into depth about this, but essentially you would use this within functions if you don't want the clone variable to be used outside of the function. Um, I have an entire video on this, just check that out. So local clone is equal to the clone and we don't, I mean, clone dot parent is equal to workspace. Okay. Remove that destroy. And this is again, a function. Okay. So we're cloning the object and we're parenting the object to workspace. And again, parent is a property. Okay. So the parent is where the object is located. So the parent of base plate in this case is test and the parent of test in this case is workspace. Okay. The parent of workspace is game. So I'm just going to run this, okay? And every second is gonna clone one of the base plates, okay? Uh, unless we have an error, um, is it? Uh, yeah, okay, okay. So it is, it's just not moving them up. As you guys can see, these are the base plates, okay? Um, there's one right here. Those are the base plates cloned 
in addition to the ones we already had, okay? Say we wanted to uh, increase the position of these. Let me combine variables and something else. So go to script and we're going to modify a property called position. So clone.position is equal to clone.position plus vector tree.new and I'll explain zero counter times 20 zero. Okay, we're going to declare a variable called counter, set that at 20, I mean at zero, and every single time we're going to add that by 20. Okay, so if this means adding to the variable. So every time we run this, it's going to add the counter by 20. Now, the position again is a property, so we're, um, we are changing the position of the clone object, okay, and then adding a new vector tree. Now, vector tree is the type for position. You should probably check that out in the wiki and the other videos I made. I can't explain that in this video. And essentially, we're adding a new vector tree and counter, in this case, is 20. Uh, I should probably just uh, 1, okay? So... This is going to go from 1 to 3, okay? So it's going to go 1 times 20, 2 times 20, 3 times 20, okay? Uh, 2, 4, 6. Now, what that'll do is essentially position each and every single base plate that is cloned higher than the previous one. So, as you guys can see, adding 20 every single time. I should probably start this off at 40, just so the uh, the other base plate isn't stuck inside the other base plate. So as you guys can see, there you go. It's adding 40 um, every single time to every single base plate. So that's a use of properties, functions, loops, and variables. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you guys is adding text um, to the user screen. So, um, go to starter GUI, insert a screen GUI. This is essentially a container. Um, I'm going to call this UI. Insert a text table, and that's a text, okay? You can move it around just like this. I'm going to set the background transparency to 1, set the size. I always do this, 0.1, comma, 0, comma 0.1 comma 0 okay so that it looks the same on every single device um if you just go to test device and just scroll through these as you guys can see it looks the same uh if you don't do that it won't okay so just put that there um text scale which means it'll scale according to the size uh change the font to something you like i don't know that change the color to white uh, add a text stroke maybe 0.5 just like that. And we have a text. That's how you add a text. Now, this is not a UI design tutorial, okay? So I'm not going to uh, go into detail about that, but we want to insert a script. Now, in starter GUI, okay, on the client, um, only local scripts work. So insert a local script rather than a script this time. As you guys can see, same thing, print hello world. Um, so local text is equal to script.parent.text. Now, the parent means the parent of this. I already explained this. And then we're checking for the text table, which is that. Um, now, what if I want to use a loop? What if I want to make a timer? Okay, again, loops. Um, this time, we want to count down instead. I haven't shown you guys that. So, um, for i is equal to 50, we want to start from 50, go to 1, and decrease by 1 every single time. That's the reason behind this loop, okay? You could also do for i to 50, um, from 1 to 50, do, and that's the same as we were doing before. Um, this will count up, but this will count down. And text.text .text is going to be equal to i. Okay, um, so text is a property, just like this. So this is what displays. So let's say uh, that. So that's where we'll start off with. Um, now, you actually need to click um, play for this to work, okay? Because you need to actually have a client. A client is essentially your uh, avatar. As you guys can see, we started off at one and it's not working for some reason. So I just need to go back to the script, okay? You want to go from 50 to one. Yes, um, so it's working, we're just not waiting. I'm just going to wait one second, okay, because the script is running instantly. That's why we're seeing one. So now, if we go to play, we, as you guys can see, we created a very basic timer. That's how you display things to the user. You could also say, um, you know, ending in continuation, just like that. And that'll say ending in 50, ending in 49, ending in 48. Okay, as you guys can see, that's how you display that to the user. Um, so yeah. Okay, I hope that wasn't too hectic for you guys. Um, I didn't cover the entire scripting syllabus. That's why I have that Zero to Hero series that I talked to you guys about. Um, but this is essentially just to help get your foot through the door uh, and start scripting on Roblox. But I try to dish out uh, as much knowledge as I can in as little amount of time as possible. 
Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you like, please leave a like. And if you have any suggestions about what videos I should make in the future, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.